Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 43 of For the Minions, the weekly show where we track some of the third person MOBAs out there on the horizon. I'm your host, the Mangoose. Joining me as always is the magnificent Mandy Mal. How you doing, Mandy? You know me, I'm just magnificent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> doing great. I'm excited because we have another good show and another special guest host with us. We have Pusey. How are you? Thanks. I'm, I'm doing good. I'm th good. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. So why don't you tell us your history with Paragon, favorite hero, all that good stuff. Okay then, uh, I started I think the second close beta week in the alpha. I, w I wish I got the first place, but yeah. Um, usually main, main jungler. Ah. Oh, you Did guys you got in a... so early. I got in so I late. Know. I feel bad. <laughs> How do you think I feel? I got to play for nine months. Yeah, I know. I you didn't even get to play. <laughs> you didn't even get to play Legacy, poor Mandy. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> so, um, check out uh, if you haven't seen it already. Check out uh, Pusey's um, hoodie there. That's pretty yeah. awesome. But we noticed that earlier. Oh, I wish I had Paragon merch. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> so I have bad. none. I have zero. Oh. It, this was all the one I bought, but it's so comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, not what I heard about the hats. Rupa said that the hats yeah. that they gave out to people that visited are absolutely terrible. Like a <laughs> metal plate bolted onto a trucker cap. <laughs> but it's a pack of merch. <laughs> oh, I would still wear it. Absolutely wear it. <laughs> right on. Let's, uh, let's hit right on into the news and updates and uh omeda kind of brought the heat this week with quite a few things that they uh that they were talking about uh first and foremost was fringe's map update um i didn't have time to get into it last week but holy crap i, I took a look at it he's building assets and and it just he's building it in one area of the map for now for just testing but it's very close very similar in appearance to the tutorial map that was on paragon i don't know if you guys remember that tutorial map but it was a beautiful map i think the first time we got to see it was sarath's hero reveal that wasn't the first time we got to see it but that's the first time people i think a lot of people took notice of it was sarah's hero, hero reveal everybody was like is that a new map what is that and um, no, it was just a tutorial map, but there's a lot of cool stuff going on there. Um, Pusey, you took a look at it. What did you think of, of that little area that he made it made inside the map? It it looked gorgeous. Yeah, incredibly well detailed. Um, the yeah. water coming out and all the little stone pillars and everything. Yeah, um, it's really detailed. Yeah. And I think that they were saying that 50% of the assets now are, are built by Fringe. Like, even though they look like uh, Epic's assets, they look like they belong in Paragon. They're actually assets that Fringe created himself to uh, yeah. lower the burden on people's computers as they're, as they're uh, playing. So they're doing some amazing stuff over at Omeda. Um, Mandy, did you get a chance to check, to check out that stream? I did. I checked it out actually a couple of times just to kind of go back and, and really look at everything. Um, and I think it's just so great that they're thinking about people with not top of the line, you know, computers. Um, some people might even be buying computers just to play predecessor. So, um, you know, they're probably just getting what they can afford to run it. So I think that's amazing that they are, are thinking of people that way with, with the assets, building the assets that way. And man, Fringe is just so talented. Like, it's just... It looks amazing. It's very, very detailed, like you guys were saying. Yeah, it's very pretty. Very pretty. I was blown yeah. away. I was like, oh my god. Because it looked... It was, the, it was the nice, colorful look of Monolith with the legacy appearance, if you get, get what I'm saying, sort of. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Uh, some other stuff that they, they did, they're... Uh, they provided some uh, real-time screen adjustments for brightness and contrast and saturation and that sort of thing, which, as we were talking about earlier, it seems like their their graphic options page is going to be four pages long by the time they're done adding stuff on. But it is nice to have those options there. It's just going to be... Uh, it's just all in all a good thing. You can't really complain about more options when it comes to exactly. customizing your gameplay experience. Yeah, you guys have anything? Not yeah, go, go ahead, Mandy. Uh, that's nothing but good for, you know, good news for the players. You can really, anytime you're given customization, I think it's a good thing. It's, you know, no one's going to argue with that. I would 
think, and I would hope. <laughs> yeah. PZ, you were saying you would, you would want to adjust the saturation a bit, right? Yeah, it, it, yeah. I, I, I like to change up the colors often in games. Yeah. And I hope they going to implement something like the, they have in Smite, where you can adjust the UI as you, as you wish. Yeah. Oh yeah, that would be really nice. I know Core was talking about that a long time ago, was having an adjustable UI. I don't yeah. know if that's been considered with Predecessor yet or not, but that would be really, really nice. If 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 nothing else, I want to be able to adjust my um, targeting reticle. I didn't like that mm. Paragon, you were stuck with the one. Yeah. Like, I always liked the little circle one, and then they gave us a different one, and I didn't like it. <laughs> I, I don't think a lot of people did. No, they well, didn't, but they well, would well, not well, give us the option to, <laughs> to, to, to change, change it. it yeah. Such a small thing, like... Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. That wouldn't have broke them. They were too busy putting target ring reticles into Fortnite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, something else friends showed off was snow on the map, which was... It looked incredible. Um, I uh, kind of missed out on the big snow event. Like, that's kind of when I had stopped playing. I stopped playing for a couple months there for a while because I was just... Uh, a little disillusioned with the game with version 43. And um, so I'd never really played in that snow environment, but God, did it look good on Predecessor's map? Holy shit. Did, did you pl did you play during the snow, uh, Mandy uh, and Pusey? Did you guys play during that time? I didn't. I'm the same as you. I had already kind of given up on it. Um, so, yeah, I didn't. I didn't. May maybe one or two games, but I don't think I. Nothing that. I can really recall. No, I didn't either. I had like a, a break in, in Monolith after a while because I got bored of it. Yes. It wasn't the same, especially mm -hmm. with some item being overpowered, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 was a lot, that was a lot of my problem with um, that new card system. It just turned some heroes yeah. into just absolute unstoppable beasts. Mm -hmm. Ugh. The one thing that you, that you could counter them with was Thorned Yomi, and then that didn't work half the time, and they kept <laughs> removing it from the games. So I was like, well, goddamn. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I know one, one thing. thing that, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going <laughs> to say, I know one thing that kind of popped into my head and maybe a couple other people's heads when they saw the uh, snow map. Does that mean that maybe we'll get, you know, the alpha in time to use it? Like, in future time, maybe, perhaps? <laughs> so I don't know if anybody else thought of that, but I was like, hmm. <laughs> I didn't think of that. That's a that's a good observation, Mandy coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I'm probably grasping at, uh, at straws here, but, you know. Yeah. I mean, you're just giving the fans false hope. Yeah, that's and, all um, I'm here to do. Putting that's undue, all I'm here undue to do. pressure on Omega Studios. That's just exactly what just... I'm here to do. <laughs> that's what I am here for, my friends. Just some harmless <laughs> predictions. That's fine. <laughs> the, the other thing that we're talking about was using um, Replication Graph uh, for network optimization. Um, <laughs> Pusey and I were talking about it earlier. Uh, Pusey, you want to go ahead and see if you can explain it? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> let me feed the guest to the fire. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, like a minion, they have a certain radius around them where every player pings to them. And if they're within the graph range, you will see them out, the minion. And if you're outside, you don't. And wa wars and allies will help with, with, with seeing uh, outside that radius of yourself i guess <laughs> <laughs> that, that's basically it it's, it's it's a tool they use in fortnite to keep games not from not being so damn laggy with like 100 people playing at once it basically just tracks the stuff around you and only shows you what you need to see like if there's minions all the way across the map in another lane uh that you're not going to be able to even interact with at all then you're just not going to see them they're not going to register on your computer yeah. whereas normally they they would be there even though you don't see them. They would be, you know, taking up some space on your map. Um, that isn't to say that you can't interact with them. If you whip out Murdoch's Long Dong, whip it across the map, and you hit some minions, it's going to show up. I mean, it's not going to be like they're 
completely gone because everything's going to have its own sort of replication graph. But so basically, yeah. is that for you? Yeah, yeah, that's a good way. Oh, uh, outside the range. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, I like that. I like that. It's kind of a weird thing. Like, Smokey uh, posted a video, and it was like a fucking hour long, and <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, it's what we just said. It's just a way to lower your lag. In the end, that's all it does is lowers lowers your lag, and that's a good thing because that's one of the things that has plagued predecessors since they released their uh, their closed alpha. Yeah. One Any... thing I was wondering about though mm -hmm. is if you if if you're on a long ray in our lane and you want to use your ult on so on I don't know something across the lane, will you be able to see it if you use the ult, or is it still zoned out? I don't know. Do you mean like for Muriel to use her ult on another hero that's outside of her? Maybe like if you, I don't know, for some reason want to ult the wave as Murdoch. Oh yeah, I think so. I think that the um, if it's gets he zoned out ult, when you ult. Yeah. I, I, I think the so. actual projectile itself has its own replication graph attached to it. Yeah. So it'll detect things as it flies. At least I hope that's how it works. It would suck if you just couldn't. <laughs> if, yeah, right. If you can't if you see anything, if you can't ult the enemy's core with Murdoch and win the game, then what's the point of playing Murdoch? What's the point of even playing? <laughs> <laughs> Always a good time when you could do that. <laughs> or just all steal the, 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 <laughs> yeah. the uh, well, uh, every single young creep. <laughs> if you see them, you're like, okay, they started now. There are five people. Let's say 20 seconds and I ult. <laughs> yeah. <hope> just <laughs> <laughs> uh, so any final any final thoughts on uh, Meta Studios and Predecessor, uh, Pusey? Uh, not really, just that the, the wind map looks awesome. And mm. I, I, I like it. I Mandy, agree. anything? No, I'm just excited. I think they're doing good good work over there. Cool beans. Let's move on to Ethereal. Um, we haven't received them yet at the time that we're recording, um, but Grognark's voice lines should be out, and I should have them um, patched into the video, so we'll go ahead and listen to those right now. Smaller creatures used to shrivel in my shadow. Now, they own the land it falls upon. Mortals forget the wrath of nature, the anger of the earth. I will make them remember. I was once a mountain, big, strong. Now, I am a pebble, small, afraid. We don't, we, we didn't get to listen to those voice lines ourselves, but, but I'm sure they're going to be good. Like, I don't want to sit here and pretend like I listen to them because maybe they're not. Maybe they're not good. But uh, I'm sure they will be. All their voice lines have been absolutely outstanding. And uh, Pusey, um, whenever I asked, you know, who, who you wanted for the thumbnail, you gave me an option of Aron or Grognark. Those seems to be and you did say that you're a jungler so those seem to be the ones that you're grad, um, sort of Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I like the aspect of if you can like build bridge, cut down a tree and build a bridge to the Floating jungle and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Very yeah, cool. Hopefully we'll that's we'll we'll like a rock. <laughs> <laughs> It'd also be cool if uh whenever you destroy that stuff, if you could deal damage with it somehow. Like if you could drop a tree oh. on top of yeah. somebody. They didn't say if that was gonna be possible or not, but man, that would be cool. <laughs> that yeah. would be you see someone run away and you cut down a tree and kill them. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. They need to put timber in their uh, voice line. In their voice line, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Grognark and uh, Aron both berserkers, kind of the ground junglers, not the skunglers as the Sky Slayers are, but yeah. there will be an item <laughs> that will allow everybody to fly. Really? Oh, yeah, um, that's what... Probably they, missed uh, that. That's, uh, that's something they, they talked about a very long time ago. When I very first started uh, talking to them, that was one of my main concerns is like, if you have a sky jungle and sky slayers, then that's going to 
every team is going to have to have a Sky Slayer, and that's going to be limiting. And they were like, no, there's there's going to be an item that you can pick up out of the item shop so that anybody can fly just like a Sky Jungler for a short period of time. So, Cool. wonder that if you can have the same as the Bruiser. Cut on threes and so on. If they start an item on that too. Yeah. I don't know. That would be weird, right? Yeah, kind of. But Sky Slayer's passive is going to be... Meh, if everyone can have it, but they still have to pay it, though. But yeah, yeah, I think it's on a sh like a cooldown, and it's only for a short yeah. period of time, though. So it's not like you can constantly fly like the Sky Slayer can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing coming out of Ethereal is the uh, the online polls. They've been doing polls, kind of like I've been doing, um, trying to get a feel, putting their feelers out to get get an idea of who the community is looking forward to the most. Uh, I think this is an excellent idea from a marketing standpoint because they need to have that. They need to have their poster child, their poster boy, or their poster girl to really lead the game um, in marketing. So I think this is a good way they can figure out who people are looking forward to the most. Uh, did you guys see those polls? They're, those polls kind of hard to miss sometimes. Uh, yeah, I missed them. <laughs> you missed them? <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> Yeah, I voted in both of them. There was two that I saw, and I voted for Who'd my... you vote for? Uh, Nikolai and Malware. Mm. Wrong and wrong. Wrong and wrong, yes, I know. <laughs> it should have been Malaya and Malaya. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't in both polls. It was Malaya and Asheron. Those are the correct answers. Oh, oh that's right. I forgot about... Well, Malaya's already kind of set up to be their poster girl a little bit but dante really kind of overtook her I, th I think it seems that dante and malware as far as i can see are probably the two most popular um, yeah. characters out right now um there are a lot of people like uh pusey here who really like the the idea of grog dark and iran yeah so. but they're probably not gonna get to shine no. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little fellas. They're like the, Poor they're little like, guys. They're like the they biggest gonna be in the characters. background. <laughs> biggest in the background. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> who do you, who was Paragon's poster child? I always everybody has a different answer for this. I always yeah. thought it was Steel, but I don't know. Who do you guys think? I, f I feel like Steel was kind of out in front in a lot of their promotion. Well promotional haha -ha. um, they didn't really put out too much promotional stuff but anytime you like the trailers and stuff he was very prominent in in them so mm -hmm. uh, i saw a lot of like twin blast in this screenshot yeah. so in the beginning at least he was and then the ps4 trailer came out it was like steely i think i don't quite remember yeah, I always remember that first commercial, like the last thing you saw was Steel coming in with a shield slam. Right. Yeah. Well, or just throw. It. Not only that, he just threw the shield aside, like jumped at the screen or <laughs> something. Like wasn't even in the game, but. <laughs> yeah, I always felt it was Steel. I know a lot of people are gonna say otherwise. Yeah, I think like you said, there's everybody has a different answer. Yeah. Which is fine. <laughs> but my but my bros rampage was were nowhere to be seen. <laughs> None of my characters. <laughs> um. All right. So let, let's move on now. Um. Well, actually, no. Let me let me back up. Let me back up. Husey, you got anything you want to say about Ethereal before we ro before we roll on? Uh, I, I'm just. <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed how good everything sounds and looks. Yeah. And I can't be more excited. Once that gameplay comes out, comes out though, that's when people are really gonna. That's when everything's gonna really <laughs> ramp up. So exciting! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's move on now to the uh, other games, uh, Metabuff and Phoenix Rising. We got nothing from them this week. Again, some more rumblings out of Metabuff, but I still haven't got anything concrete. So once I do, I'll, I'll let you guys know. And Phoenix Rising, they're still just working away back there, doing their thing. Hopefully. Uh, I don't, I don't think we'll see anything out of them this year, but maybe next year we'll see something. I'm gonna, I'm still going to continue tracking them. They were the first ones to step up and pick up that Paragon Torch and start carrying it forward. So I think we owe it to them to, to keep them in our hearts and minds and, and not forget about them because they didn't forget about us. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I kind of miss them, though, because I, I really like, enjoy their jungle style. Yeah, with all the mushrooms and everything. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
and uh, their big big jungle boys boss. Yeah. Oh L- yeah. Looks really detailed when yeah. they created it. That big kaiju looking motherfucker. Yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> he looked pretty sick. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that, if you guys want to learn any more about these games, I'll have all of their socials that I can linked in the video description below. But uh, we're going to move it along now to my poll results, the ones that I've been doing, which is the Ultimate Ultimate competition, who you guys thought had the best ultimate. And uh, this week it was Sev and it was Severog and Gideon. Gideon won with 75% of the votes. Uh, Severog, of course, had 25%. Uh, not really surprising to me. I do... I do think Severog was a better overall character, but I think Gideon's ultimate was probably a little more impactful, especially when they attached a stun to it. But uh, yeah, Gideon will face off against Aurora next week in the final showdown to find out who you guys thought had the best ultimate in Paragon. So uh, Pusey, who who do you think, Severog, Severog or Gideon as far as the best ultimate? <coughs> I, I think Gideon, but I guess Severog could kill Maybe one or two, but Gideon's, you could wipe out an, an entire team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If the placement was it was good and you had good setup, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> if, if you have like a Gideon j- jumping from behind, ulting, and then a steel jumps in. Yeah. Yeah. Or a gadget yeah. ult in that or whatever. I think Gideon's required a lot more um, thought and setup and everything like that, but definitely... Uh, in the long run was more impactful. I am a little surprised at the difference between them, though. I really thought, Sev, it, that it would be a close one between these guys, but... Severogs was on a much shorter cooldown, so that yeah gave it a little bit of an edge, yeah. but... Yeah, I think when we're talking about impactful ultimates, like the big game-winning plays, uh, it was hardly ever a colossal blow. However, yeah, it was oftentimes yeah. a good black hole, so... I think uh, I think I, I think I like the results of this time around. Now it is time for the topic of discussion for this week, and the topic for discussion we're going to be talking about how uh, other spells from other games that we feel need could could would be nice to be imported into um, any of these games, uh, predecessor, core, uh, Phoenix Rising, Ethereal, and then also how different spells could interact on Ethereal's weird sort of map structure. So. That's uh, Pusey and I were talking about a little bit. So since I know Mandy's not prepared, Mandy, what do you think? Uh, I <laughs> actually am prepared. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as far as like spells that I would like to see, I don't play a lot of spell caster type um, heroes. So I'm not, I don't have an answer for that. But uh, for um, spells that I would like to see or how they should function or could function on the layered map. Um, the main two things that came to my mind would be for like vision, um, which I know there's wards, but maybe it could be a certain type of um, like uh, knock knock and who's there and all that. Uh, the, yeah, what was yeah. That guy's- Great, there we go. Uh, you know, maybe there could be a spell that gave you a little extra vision um, on on the different layers of the map. Like, say you have to go to the top one, but you can still see what's going on in the middle one or whatever, something like that. And then also travel, just getting from one layer to the next, um, maybe a little more quickly, but not in an overpowered way, which I don't know how that could be balanced. Um, it's not my job. That's not my job to balance that out. <laughs> 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 I will leave that to the capable hands of <laughs> the developers. But um, those were the two things that kind of came to my mind was just vision and travel and how that would be kind of fun to have a spell yeah. that could. Uh, I think something out. like Kalari's vision would work, you know, whenever she revealed everybody on the map. That's true. Um, yeah. Something that could do that team wide would be really nice for Ethereal, I think. Yeah, that would be. I, don't, I, I still don't know how they're going to do their mini map. It's going to be a weird one. <laughs> yeah, I haven't yeah. thought about that. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How to make it good. The, the only way I can think is if you put like a little like indicator by their by the person's face on the minimap as to what level they're on. Like, yeah. But then yeah. if they're in between levels, how would you indicate that? <laughs> or if they're outside jungle. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. 
Yeah, I have no idea what they're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> it, w it will be interesting, though. Yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, we can get a little sneak peek at that uh, sometime. Uh, I, know the, I know the developers are watching, so... <laughs> So, uh, Pusey, what what did you think? <clears throat> yeah, it, it's like some character are built from other MOBAs. I think, like, I don't know if you played Hero Heroes of Storm. Mm -hmm. There's a guy called Shugal, and then there's two two people in one character. Yeah, and how that would would work? That, one, I... one guy is staring, and otherwise, it's like a mage inside. Hmm. That would be that would seems like something that Ethereal would implement too. Uh, I get, that's really that's something that any of the games could implement, you know, down the road after they're done putting all the all the heroes that people want to see in there and they start designing their own. Something mm -hmm. Cho'Gallish would be really cool. Um, Special Ethereal because it's six v six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cho'Gall is a pain in the ass to deal with too if you don't know <laughs> what you're yeah. doing. Because that is a ton of health and a lot of damage coming out of... Yeah. <laughs> you, and you, um, that's another thing, though. You really got to trust the person that you're playing with. Like, if one yeah. person's controlling the movement, the other person's controlling most of the damage. Yeah, you really got to put put your faith in each other's hands there. That's and you might, <laughs> you might screw up if one guy dashing one way and using the other guy using spells that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everything misses. <laughs> yeah. Then when he, once he gets kills, it, killed, it's a two for one, really. You know, you're yeah. taking yeah. two people out of the fight. I, I could definitely see Ethereal doing that, though. Um, something, yeah. another here's the storm sort of tie in. That's kind of what I think that the overseers are going to be doing, or going to be kind of like Abathur, where he yeah. kind of puts a hat. He puts his top hat. If you guys don't know who Abathur is. He puts like um, his own little thing that he controls on top of somebody's head, and then he can fire from them like they're a tower. I mean, they're, the the movement is completely based on them, and then his body is elsewhere on the map. And then he can also set various traps around the map without ever moving around the map. I think that's kind of what an overseer would be. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I I had talked to Owen about that, and Owen had no idea who Abathur was. So <laughs> they <laughs> obviously like didn't take inspiration <laughs> from Abathur. <Yeah. laughs> it's like Cappy from Mario Odyssey, but like how Mario can put his cap on. Yes, the there you and... go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's sort of those to play League of Legends. Yumi, she can jump onto a um, teammate when, but but only if she's close and use her spells. Oh really? Yeah. She just rides rides atop them. Yeah, use I can use all her spells and ju then jump out whenever she wants. Oh, that's really cool. Hmm. And she's uh, a support. Yumi's a cat, right? Like a little cat. Hmm. Isn't Yumi like a little cat or something? Yeah, I think yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I was thinking of as far as how spells could affect Ethereal. Are spells that impact every level, like it, like calling in a meteor that hits top and goes, you know, drills down to the bottom, oh. and then wow, like, wow. But would that be like how would you balance that? Like, would it be yeah. instantaneous, like a beam that just shoots straight through everything, and there's some sort of indicator on each level to let right. you know that it's about to hit, or would it be like I like it busts through the top, busts through the bottom, you know, middle, and then hits the bottom or something like that? I don't know. Yeah. That's a, they can do a lot of cool stuff with that game. Yeah. Maybe being able to fire from one level into the other level. Like a... Like like, a go ahead and say it, Mandy. Like this, a Murdoch. <laughs> a Murdoch what? A Murdoch oh. long dong. Yes! <laughs> I didn't want to say it. <laughs> Shooting from the top lane to the bottom lane, if, yeah. if that works. Yeah. I, I imagine one of the heroes is going to have an ability like that where they can just fire all the way through the map. I mean, it's that's got to be there. That's got to be there. That would be really cool. And I, I would like to see, what, like I was saying, like just a regular ability that goes through all the levels. Mm -hmm. Like multiple yeah. ones like that would be kind of cool, I think. I feel like I could see that on like Malware or Dante, like on a marksman. The, um, the long fire? Yeah. Yeah. Being able to... Yeah, maybe maybe uh, malware with his bow and arrow, he can yeah. do a charge shot like Sparrow used to do. 
Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Oh, wouldn't that be neat? If it was just a regular ability, not an ultimate, but it was a charged shot like hers that could pierce terrain, and you could just fire. If you were good enough, you could fire <laughs> down at the mid laner, or if you're at the oh. bottom lane, you'd fire up. Gotta at them. keep the poking. <laughs> Every time we talk about this game, I get so hyped for it. Just the possibilities are endless here. Right? Love it. Absolutely love it. Like <laughs> Here's the Storm was an underrated game, and it, it's kind of kind of over. It's not really done with, but they're they're kinda, it's really on the back burner right now. But I think it's a good a good place to pick up some inspiration for spells because they did some really interesting stuff. Yeah. In that game, it just wasn't. A, it was too stripped down of a MOBA to 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 really compete with the rest of them. I think. Yeah. <clears throat> and they they and Dota have the same me kind of mechanic when you're controlling multiple character as as one person. Yeah. Oh, Dota has one like that too. Yeah, they have Meep Meepo Meepo something like that. And th as long as one of the guys survive, you don't die. Oh, really? Oh. Well, I think neat. I think it works like that. And you can and you you can just jump with all of them, and it's my, it really much micromanaging and yeah. stuff like that hmm. and how that would work on ethereal for for example mm -hmm. something i was kind of thinking of was like uh ragnaros and hots which there's there's, yeah. probably, there's probably some other stuff and other ones but you know he can call a flame wave that travels down a lane it doesn't have to be the lane he's in it starts at the core and goes to the enemy's core and it goes and it just completely wipes out that lane as it goes i think that would be cool for ethereal That's and just being able to it, would, it would be real good as well and you have his passive D spell when he jumps in into turret and protects oh, it. Oh yeah, that was cool too. Yeah. Uh, as we said, Heroes of the Storm got a lot of unique yeah. <laughs> things. <laughs> Maybe that's something overseers could do: is jump into towers, yeah. control towers mm -hmm. and minions and stuff like that. That would be kind of neat. I want when the towers go down. I want to say. I hope the princess was in another castle. That's what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> how, how are we going to think about like summoner spells in League or relics in Smite when you have this these extra abilities? Right. Mm. Like goes when, when you run fast or blink or teleport and stuff like that. Mm. Maybe, um, you know, a small period of flight could be a relic in yeah. Ethereal. Yeah. Just anybody could pick it up at the beginning. That would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's about all I have for the subject. You guys have uh, anything else you wanted to add? I'm good. No, I'm good. All right. Uh, so that's going to wrap it up then for the topic of discussion. Let's get into plugs. Pusey, you got anything to plug? You got a YouTube channel, Twitch, Twitch or anything like that? I have a Twitch channel, but I really don't stream a lot of it. But when... Predecessor or Ethereals come out, I'm gonna stream a lot more. It's oh, right Twitch TV slash PUC. Alright, I'll have it linked Basically. down in the down in the description below. Same old, same old over here. <laughs> 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 Just uh twitching every now and again and every once in a great while I'll upload to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> Uh, by the time this comes out, I'll have a video on Project Stamina out. That's, um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Gigantic, but that was another game that unfortunately got shut down because of corporate mismanagement instead of, you know, it being a poor game. And, mm -hmm. uh, they have their own group of fans that are trying to revive that game and they're kind of rebuilding it, um, from the ground up. So, um, you can check that out if you want. But uh, that is going to be it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And thank you oh so much for coming out. This is the For the Minions crew signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangoo!